dear brothers and sisters. This morning I was praying for you. I waited in prayer and I got a message from the Lord. A message for every one of you. And this message is Hebrews 13, chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. And the word goes like this. The Lord God says, I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you. And the next verse and therefore, we have confidence in the love of our God. What can man do to me? We shall never be afraid. Shall we say praise the Lord for this word of God? Hallelujah. 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 A personal message for every one of us here. I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you. And therefore we have confidence. Confidence in the Lord. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is there by my side. What can man and woman do to me? I shall never be afraid. But my friends, when we sit here in the presence of our God, we would remember there were many moments in our past when we were afraid. When we were desperate. When we gave up. We thought of giving up on life. We thought of giving up on marriage. We thought of giving up on our family because everything looked so dark everything looked so uncertain and you and I even thought life was not worth living and all that pain could be there in our hearts as a bitter as a sad memory I loved someone I cared for someone, but that person, my wife, my husband, a friend, my own son, my own daughter, they did not care. They did not care for me. And I felt so abandoned. I felt so deserted. I lost my confidence in life. My confidence in love. You know, love is a giving. A gift of myself to the other. To give, I need to be filled. But I'm not able to feel the fullness. I will not give. I will not let myself go. I will not let myself flow. I will hold on to what I have. Because I'm... I'm frightened, I'm afraid to give because I'm scared. If I give, I may lose everything I have. And that's why we don't dare to love. That's why we complain. That's why we grab whatever I could to hold on to things, to hold on to people, imagining he or she will fill my heart. And we were disappointed, frustrated. And today, we need to open our hearts to the fullness of love flowing into us. The Lord God says, I will never abandon you. I will never forsake you. That is the confidence we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the past, our confidence was I have a wife there for me. I have a husband to care for me. 
and he came home in the evening you came home in the evening with that confidence i have a wife waiting for me with love with a cup of tea and she was not there waiting for me not even with a cup of tea not even with a smile and i i looked around she was gone with her friends for an outing she did not wait for me and that's when you were angry i i thought my husband is there for me my husband would always understand me and that's when he made a mistake an oversight just an oversight and your husband took it so bad he shouted and he screamed he let all the hell loose and you wondered why what happened why is he shouting why is he angry he felt he felt he's not there for you it could be a past my dear brothers and sisters however old we grow we remain little children grabbing waiting to be cared for waiting to be loved and all the problems in our marriage in our family life is this that all the time we are trying to grab we are waiting to receive we don't dare give i don't dare give myself and so i'm not able to trust others i'm not able to experience the love of others and one thing we shall know our confidence is not is not in the love of the other in a husband who imagines the wife would be there for me all the time he will be disappointed if there is any wife who imagines my husband would always understand me she would be a frustrated woman and these are the bitter and sad feelings of the past i remember um a young wife telling me you know father i love my son my darling son so um wonderful a son god gave me the whole day i would be thinking of him i would be waiting for him to come home from the school and i would be dreaming i would sit with him i would go for a walk with him and i would i would feed him and i would talk to him and he would talk to me and she would be imagining great things happening in the evening and that's when the little son comes home running running asking mummy for a cup of tea he got the cup of tea and he ran away to play with his friends to play with his friends and mummy was angry disappointed disappointed so desperate and frustrated uh, she told me father i would be angry sadness always leads us to anger i would be angry when he comes home um, two hours after tired sweating i would shout at him when i shout at him he would go and sit in the corner and sob when i see tears in the eyes of my son i would feel terrible and i would go and hug him and later when he sleeps i would go and sit at the bed and cry and i would tell him my son you deserve a better mother where our children deserve a better mother a better father a father and mother who are ready to give themselves without waiting to grab but then in order to let myself go to each other to our children we need to be filled our confidence my confidence is not in the love of my husband it's not in the love of my wife it's not in the love of my children my confidence is in the love of my god 
that my God is there for me and his love flows into my heart to fill me only if I have confidence in the love of my God only if I am filled with the love of my God only then only then will I be able to give will I be able to let myself go hallelujah 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 you know many young men and young women come for a retreat and one thing um they often tell me you know father i love that girl father i love that girl only if only if i can marry her i would be the happiest man father father do you understand my heart the feelings of my heart father i i want to be lost in her i want to give myself to, to her and I, i love her so much but my parents they don't understand father old fashioned they have their own customs their own expectation but i know what i want this is the girl that i want she's enough for me you know in the beginning of my ministry here i made the mistake of believing them and i did help some of them to hurry with their marriage soon i realized they were not the happiest men they were not the happiest women you know the reason the reason is they made an idol of the other a boy thinking the girl is enough for him a girl imagining the boy would fill her heart no man will ever be able to fill the heart of a woman no woman will be able to be enough for a man and perhaps that is all the mistake we made in our marriage in our family life waiting to be loved waiting to be cared for waiting to be understood waiting to be served and the other could not rise up to my expectations the other could not answer my questions the other could not respond to my feelings the other failed me and we hold on to such bitter experiences in our hearts moments we felt deserted abandoned and we felt lonely the lonely feelings of our heart are those when we felt that the dearest the nearest did not care did not care for my feelings for my problems but then but then you and i need to understand the fullness comes not from any man not from any woman and that's why god gave us the first commandment and the first commandment was don't make idols don't make idols if you make idols of your wife of your friend of your husband the idol will surely fail you you have only me the lord god said only me look at me and live to be able to look at god and live to be able to look at god and let all his love flow into our hearts that's a fullness our hearts are filled only by god only when i'm filled by god's love and today we sit here before the lord to understand how much we are loved how much we are cared for and that's why saint paul is praying saint paul in the letter to ephesians chapter 3 chapter 3 saint paul is praying 3 verses 14 on verse for this reason i kneel before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith 
that you rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of god that surpasses all knowledge paul is praying for every one of us that we may receive the grace to understand to comprehend the height and the depth the width and the breadth of the love of god so that you may be rooted rooted and grounded in love shall we say praise the lord for that hallelujah 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 you and i are people who wanted to be rooted and grounded in the love of a woman of a man of a friend of a partner and that's precisely why we are sad today that's precisely why we are not rooted today the christian is life worth living at all because where am i rooted who is there for me a question we ask again and again who is there for me there could be someone here who wanted to be rooted and grounded having confidence in money in talents my name my fame everything fails everything including my wife including my son including my daughter including my husband we are rooted if at all we will be rooted and grounded it is only in the love of our god and that love is offered to us the love is offered to us in the holy spirit as we are told in the letter to romans that god's love may flow into your hearts that god's love may fill your hearts so full that we have much to give we have much to give to the other my wife came crying came complaining when my wife came complaining to me i was angry why was i angry look at that girl i'm in trouble i have so much to do and that's why she is coming cribbing complaining sad i could not understand her not because i did not love her but I'm not the fullness of love. I'm not the fullness of love. I have no fullness because I did not open my heart for the fullness of love, God's love to flow into me. You know, I always remember what one of our professors t- told us. This was a course we got in the final year of a of a seminary formation a few months before our priestly ordination we had a course in family counseling this was a one month course the course was given by an anglican pastor from london he and his wife wonderful couple the pastor and his wife wonderful couple and um you know they were so highly spiritual uh, so uh, so much loving so much caring to each other and to us we felt very close to them and they felt very close to us almost at the end of the course the pastor asked us a question he said brothers you are going to be ordained priests after your priestly ordination you will be appointed in a parish or in a mission station or in an institution what do you think is going to be the real problem in your life what are you afraid of when you think of the future uh, we, well we had nothing to hide 
we opened up. Uh, some of us said, Pastor, uh, we are young and we are coming out of seminary with a lot of expectations, with great ideas. And we would go with our ideas and our expectations. And the people may not understand us. They may criticize. They may say atrocious things about us. And we would be hurt. Another one said, not only the people, even our own superiors may not be able to understand us. And as young priests, we would be appointed under an elder priest. And this man could be uh, of the last generation. This man could misinterpret even the best of our intentions. And another said, uh, we may not get enough finances uh, to put into practice our goals, our ideas, and our plans. Another one said, we may have no one to turn to in the moments of our troubles, and we would be lonely. And then one of us, um, in a little uh, jovial mood, he said, Pastor, you are married. You have your wife with you all the time to talk to you, to care for you, to understand you. We are going to be Catholic priests. And we will not be married. There would be no one. There would be no one to understand us, to uh, care for us. And we would have no one to turn to. In the moments of our loneliness, in the moments of our pain of being misunderstood, and that loneliness is going to be our problem. And uh, we had a little discussion, and all of us agreed the big problem of our priestly life and ministry would be loneliness. And that's when the pastor and his wife, the two of them, uh, they faced each other, and they had a little discussion. The pastor asked his wife, Darling, I love you very much. And you know that we are married now 25 years. And we were together wherever I went. I made it a point to come home every evening. And when I went out of the country, I made it a point to take you with me so that I may always be there for you, and I wanted you to be with me. But then, he asked her, Darling, have you ever felt lonely? A question, a very wonderful, loving, holy husband asking the wife, Have you ever felt lonely? And we were curious. And the lady she, in openness, she said, Well, I know you love me. Uh, rather, I must tell you, I know you try to love me. And um, I understand this uh, with my mind, that you always love me. But often, I had to think for a moment to know that you love me. Many moments, I, I felt you are far away from me. Well, the whole day, I would be waiting for you, just to sit with you and to talk to you, the whole day. And I would see you coming in, when you open the door of the car and step out of the car, I would see a lot of files and books in your hands. And my heart would sink. You're coming to sleep with the books and files. You're coming to spend the evening buried in the books and the files. And you're a good man, you're a loving husband, so when I talk to you, you would try to be there to, to understand me, not to hurt me. You never want to hurt me. Perhaps I thought not out of love, but out of obligation. 
because you are a good man you would not want to hurt me but you are listening to me out of obligation and soon i would see you yawning and tossing and i would know i am a tiring presence for you you are trying to love you not because you love but because you need to love and she said when we are in bed together the moment you go to bed you would sleep i would turn the other side and i would i would weep and i would feel far away from you no one to wipe my tears and she went on and on and on finally she said um there were moments i regretted for having married you i should have married a commoner um a man of the street and he would have been there for me to come to the market with me to take me for an outing for me to talk to him i made a mistake in marrying a big professor a big pastor you are not there for me and that is the pain of my heart many a time i felt lonely and we were shocked to hear all that and um, then the wife asked him uh, you know i love you very much to be there for you i resigned my job i also was a professor in oxford but you are also the professor and um i i resigned my job to be always there for you and for our children have you ever felt lonely um and we were again curious to hear what the husband such a nice such a loving such a caring husband would say and and he said i know you love me oh sure definitely you love me but i must tell you this um you could never understand me could you of course you try hard to understand you're a good woman you try hard to understand me but but you said uh, i come home with the files and books do you care to think for a moment what it means to me to be all the time uh with the books with the files because i am a man of responsibility i have to prepare my lessons i have to have a lot of time caring for my parish and my pastor i have responsibilities in the parish have you ever cared to understand i am a busy man and i never understood why i should come with you to the market to buy cucumber you could do it yourself why should i waste my time for that and there were moments i regretted for having married at all i realized a woman would never be able to understand the needs and feelings of a man and we were shocked again in those uh, days we thought marriage was bliss and when the two wonderful people when they shared their feelings of loneliness we we were little shaken up and then the pastor told us brothers don't imagine we are bad couple very wonderful couple don't imagine that we fight all the time we don't we don't fight all the time i want to tell you is that the moments of loneliness the moments we felt sad the moments we felt um dissatisfied and frustrated those are the moments the best moments of our love because those were the moments we held on to each other and turned to god they tell god oh my god my, my husband is not enough for me my wife is not enough for me 
I am trying to grab all the love and understanding from her. And we need you. We need your love to fill me in order that I may be able to give my love to the other. You know, we speak a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings. More than feelings and emotions, there is the great attitude. Attitude to let myself go. Let myself flow into the other. Forgetting myself. Living for the other. He said, brothers, this is possible. Only when we hold on to God and we know God is holding on to us. And that's when we really understood the meaning of marriage. The meaning of family life. Marriage in the Lord. Family life centered on God. God, only God is the fullness. To experience God's love is the confidence we have to love the other. Hallelujah. Till all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah. 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 